Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We want to invite you to join us this morning in singing our praise and worship portion. Uh, you're all I need. How many of you came to worship God this morning in this place? Stand to your feet with us as we sing, you're all I need. thankful for this week that has been blessed a lot of times we focus on the negative things correct it's very easy to focus on the negative things but I guarantee you that when we lift our praises to God especially in those times of hurt and pain of, of stress of anxiety if we turn to him and 
and just start praising him. And the praises rise, as the song says. The inside of us starts to become less rigid, right? More relaxed, less anxious. And so let's just sing this together and let God speak to us.
say, Lord, we want to lift all of our problems, all of our worries to you right now, God. You are the only one who can fix, solve, whatever, create, whatever needs to be done. We put our trust in you, God. This song was requested today, this morning, by my husband. He's like, man, I wish you guys could sing this song. And so it's kind of last minute, but when, when God is speaking through someone, we should listen, right? And this song is perfect for today. Jesus went to Calvary. How many of you know this song? Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. And that shows love, right? So it's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 19. Everyone that's there, say amen. I see a lot of people with their Bibles. Amen. All righty. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. 
the old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. Amen. Now all things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconcil reconciliation. Y'all help me. Namely, that, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and us, against us, really. And he has committed us the word of reconciliation. Amen. That was a scripture reading. Amen. Good morning. You know what time it is to, right now. It's time for us to come before the throne of God, to give him praise. Today, this week, we're celebrating, memorializing the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And normally I would say, if you have a praise, or a petition come. But if you do not have a praise this morning, then you do not know who Jesus is. Because Jesus died to save each and every one of us from our sins. He stretched out on the cross for Sonia. He stretched out for David, for Tasha, for Adriana, for Nicole, for Dolly, for Pastor Pogson, for those behind the, um, the media team. He stretched out on the cross for each and every one of us. And we have to recognize the sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf. He was sinless. Not one thing did he ever do wrong. But he's there because of me. He was there because of me. He was there because of you. There is a song that says, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. You were on his mind. So I'm going to say to you this morning, if you have a praise, let's come up here and pray to God. And I'm just going to assume, and don't get mad at me for saying this, that if you don't come, unless you're unable to come. Well, you, you follow. Our Father and our God, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, we come before you this morning. Oh, Father God, Jesus, Son of Christ, we come adoring, praising, worshiping, your matchless name, Father God, not just this week, we should do it every day for the sacrifice you made to save a wretch like me. Lord Jesus, teach us not to just say words, not to worship you with our lips, but let the heart, let our minds dwell on who you are and surrender to you and praise you, God, for your faithfulness, for your loving kindness, for your great grace, your mercy to us, a wicked people, each and every day. My Father and my God, I thank you, I thank you, and I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice thanks you, God, for the sacrifice that you made. Oh, you suffered a cruel death for me and for everyone here. Lord Jesus, help, it, help us never, ever to take it for granted. We are not here for ritual, God. You say we should come and worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, and we honor you. Father God, our first gift our first gift in return should be coming to you and saying, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, forgive me 
and have mercy on me and then surrender our lives to you. Lord Jesus, I pray, I pray today that this will be the petition on every heart, God, that we will ask for forgiveness, that we will re repent and turn away from our sins and surrender these lives of ours to you. The song they sang, Jesus died on the cross. That's love. Oh God, we cannot fathom your love. We, we, we don't even understand a love like yours. But God, just from the, the blessings, just from the protection, from the sustenance, all of the things that you do for us, God, can we not just love you for that? Lord, I ask you to have mercy, have mercy, God. And Lord, I am praying for every person standing here, those online, wherever people are that will hear this prayer, God help us, help us, Father, to see the true sacrifice that you made on our behalf. And more than that, the importance of surrendering our lives to you so that we do not have to suffer for our sins. Because yes, you did die on the cross for us, but if we do not accept you, if we do not surrender our lives to you, we have no share, we have no part in eternal lives. So God help us, help us to do it and to do it now. Father God, I ask you in a very special way to remember those who are sick, those who are bedridden, those who say, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, tired of being sick. Those who are in family relationships that are so stressed, so worn, God. Those who are in financial um, trouble, God, in dire need. Lord God, and those who are bereaved, God, your grace, your mercy, that same love that you stretched out and made the ultimate sacrifice, you will not overlook it, it, any of us, God. So Lord, I ask you to help every person to know that your love did not end on the cross. It did not end on the morning of resurrection. You have loved us from the beginning and you will love us to the end, even, even if we do not surrender to you. You wish above all things that we, none would be lost, but God, help us, Father. Help us to surrender. And remember each and every person that I have called out. Now, God, I ask you to be with our speaker today, Pastor Podson. I ask you, Father, to give him the word, speak through him the word that you have given him and open our hearts, Father. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen and amen. It's time for our announcements. And what I want to encourage you to do is if you don't remember the information, to just take a picture of it. So that way you can refer back to it and know what date, time, place, everything is. So to start off with our Sabbath Bites, we ask that you join us at 10 a.m. Out, uh, out in the foyer area, there'll be some breakfast items. And then after that, you will just go to your Sabbath school classes at 10 a.m just kidding reverse so uh, you'll have the the refreshments after Sabbath school all right <laughs> this is not my usual station all right so the next thing is we have Bible study we want to ask you to join us on Wednesday nights here uh, in the sanctuary in person and or online uh, Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. We are doing a Bible study. Uh, Pastor Pogson is leading out on that currently. And so we just ask you to come and join us. It, it does feel, uh, it's nice when there's more people here because you get different questions and responses and you just learn more when you're gathered together um, as a group. So please come out on Wednesday night at 6.30 
Palace of Peace women meet a gathering of love and encouragement. So it says you are invited to come out and share in the time of fellowship and relationship building. The menu will be soups and salads, dessert and tea. It's going to be tomorrow, Sunday, March. Uh, tomorrow is the, the first, 31st, excuse me. So 31st tomorrow at 3 p.m. And it says, we hope to see all women out tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. for our women's gathering here at Palace. If you do not receive or did not receive your personal invitation to the women's gathering, it is because you haven't submitted your information. Please let us know you will be attending so we can be prepared. RSVP to Marie Heaton. Marie's right there. She just raised her hand. If you could see her after church today, uh, that, and let her know that you will be in attendance tomorrow at what time? 3 p.m. That was one person. Tomorrow at what time? 3 p.m. Did you hear that? Come on, ladies. So this is a way to get to know each other, right? When we gather. All right. Looking forward to seeing you. And then lastly, we have a men women's ministry monthly book club beginning Sunday, April 14th, reading the women of the Bible, Speak by Shannon Bream. Get your copy and join us at 5 p.m. Contact Simone Webley. Simone uh, was down here with her husband, if you remember, uh, promoting the singles event that's going to be happening as well. Uh, that is the person of contact. As you can see, her email and her phone number are up there. So if you are interested, be sure to take a picture. All right, and that's Simone Webley. And then one more. We have the Art Deco Project Singles Ministry. So last, week, last time they were here as well, Simone Webley had brought... Uh, some a plate showing that it was decorated and uh, they're trying to get the singles ministry going uh, it says the presenter is mrs rachel banks when sunday march 31st the time is from 1 p.m to 3 p.m and where it is is denver park hill sda church or by zoom and as you can see in the little bubble on the side, there is the zoom information if you are interested in this deco project which is decorating a plate that you can serve on or whatever you would like to do. We have bags over here to my right, and you can pick up the supplies to be able to participate in this project, which is tomorrow uh, at 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. So please see me if you would like to be a part of this presentation. And then one more. Uh, Youth Children's Day. The speaker is going to be Jonathan Pogson. Raise your hand. It's a blessing when he does speak, definitely, so you'll want to be in attendance. Young people, this is the time and the opportunity to invite your friends. Yes? Yes. As many as you want. Invite them to come to church with you because you have someone who's going to be giving a great presentation. April 6th, 2024 at 1130 a.m. And that's going to be here at Palace of Peace. All right. And now is our time for a welcome. And what we do here is we just get up out of our seats and we go around and speak to one another, say good morning, happy Sabbath, and just let people know that you are welcomed here at Palace of Peace. Go ahead and stand to your feet.
Amen, amen. Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath, and, and welcome, welcome. We are going to at this time lift this morning's tithe and offering. And so um, we're going to ask our deacons to get in place as we return to God his tithe and we also um, give a free will offering. Won't you just bow your heads with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we are so thankful for uh, life and strength, for the rain that falls on the just and the unjust, for the goodness of God that we all receive. And so God, we just pray that as we return a tithe and offering this morning, that you would bless those who gave and those, oh God, who did not have to give. We ask, oh God, that I will continue to look to you for providence and for sustenance. We pray that these funds would be used to further your kingdom here at uh, the Palace of Peace, 7 Adventist Church and beyond. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. going to ask if you would stand with us again for our worship time before the actual sermon. Holy forever. The song can make you really sometimes feel emotional because when you actually think about it, the angels singing holy, holy, holy to our one and only God. Isn't that such a comforting and awesome vision? And we are a part of that to be able to say, God, you are so holy. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe We'll sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all power and positions. Your name stands above them all. And the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, holy, you are lifted high, holy, holy forever. Oh. 
Happy Sabbath. We again we just want to welcome you to our service here today. It's uh, I, I I have a little nostalgia today. It's uh, this is what the ancients would call a high day in Zion. Whenever whenever a feast day like the the Passover feast of Tabernacles. Whenever a feast day and, uh, landed on the Sabbath day, it was a double convocation, amen? It was a high day in Zion. Today is our Sabbath day. This weekend is also um, Easter weekend. And of course, today we'll be um, celebrating the Lord's Supper. So, a high day. A high day in Zion, in Zion for us. The, the message this morning is entitled, Nobody Loves You Like I Do. And in my own way, I say, Nobody Loves You Like I Do, baby. Because I feel like it's a special, it's a special love between, between us and, and God. Nobody loves you like I do, baby. Uh, I want to take us on a journey, on a special journey this morning. I, I, I feel a, 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 a weight this morning to sort of explain what Christians all over the world are doing. And days like today, and weekends like this weekend. So that somebody who is here today would appreciate the love of God for them. And that someone who would stumble on this broadcast in the weeks to come would learn of the great God has for them. So it's going to be part teaching, part preaching. Thank you. Amen. 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 It's going to be praise the Lord. Amen. It's going to be part teaching, part preaching so that we can, we can get through today. I am uh, happy. I'm seeing some wonderful new faces. If you look around the sanctuary... You're going to see some new folks in different spots around. Firstly, though, firstly, though, it would be remiss of me not to welcome the newest couple at the Palace of Peace, 7th Adventist Church. 
So I'm going to invite you, the newest couple, brand new, uh, they got married, it was last Sunday. So I'm going to invite you to put your hands and help me welcome Mr. and Mrs. Rainford and Tui McKenzie, the newest couple right here at the Palace of Peace, Seven Adventist Church. We want to welcome you officially and pray that God would continue to bless your union with his special love. And then as you look around, we've got uh, 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 some, I saw some ladies, young ladies uh, uh, behind the cameras and then uh, behind the, 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 the mixing board behind there. When you get a chance, say a very special hello to sisters. Uh, 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 no, no, I'm, I'm going to get the names. Oh, no, I'm not. Jade and Sky right there. Welcome them. They are doing a tremendous job in, in our sound and our sound system. They are doing a, a, a tremendous job with our sound system. The, the sound crew is, is increasing and improving. Amen. And then um, I want to just say a very special hello and a, 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 a Palace of Peace welcome to a new friend in, in our midst, Gifty, as she's here. And um, if, you see, if you see her smiling face later as we... As we um, leave uh, the service, um, say a very special welcome to her. She's a, a friend and a guest of um, Dr. Jessica Kisunzu. And so um, we just want to welcome them. And I think um, it, it is Ashley here um, today. All right. Uh, I, I, it, uh, now, um, would you please stand up for me? Is, is today your last Sabbath with us? Uh, her, her husband, Josh. Um, went uh, ahead, and so this is her final Sabbath um, with us here. Uh, we have um, grown to love you, appreciate you, as uh, worshiping with you, and um, and your husband and your dog as well. And um, <laughs> and so we we just want to pray that God will continue to bless you and um, be be with you as you move forward. Uh, 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 serving God and also serving your country. They are a military family, amen? And, 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 and not just serving God, but serving, serving their country. And, and um, we pray that God would continue to bless you. As you see, Ashley, um, later on after church and even at our, at our fellowship dinner, uh, 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 give her that special hug, put some money in her pocket, put a card in her hand, and, um, and we would bid them Godspeed on their way as well too. Amen? Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand. And we're going to expound a bit on the scripture reading that was read to us so eloquently um, by our sister. Uh, we, we, we heard from her uh, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And she did uh, 17 to 19. But we want to start at verse 10 this is the context this is why why Christians especially pastors why we do what we do why we put on special vestments why we do these special services why we are here at um, at communion time and worship time this is why we do what we do won't you bow your heads with me first before we read Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus we just want to dedicate and surrender this time to you. We want to surrender the atmosphere, the air, our very lives, ourselves, the building, uh, 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 the, 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 the musicians, the praise team, the, the, the instruments, oh God. We want to surrender them to you so that we would hear a clear and clarion voice today. A voice that tells us of love, a voice that teaches hope, and a voice that spreads grace. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. And amen. I want to read from the New International Version. And this is why we do what we do. This is why we have uh, uh, Easter type services. This is why we have Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday services. This is why we do Lord's Supper service. This is, this is our very reason for existence. Uh, the Bible says in verse 10, For we must all... Every one of us, what? Appear before what? 
the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Since then, we know, so Paul is speaking on behalf of Christians, on behalf of pastors, on behalf of the clergy, on behalf of the ministers. Paul says, since then we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade others. That's why we're here today. That's why we do a, a Good Friday and Easter service today. Paul says that we know what it is to fear the Lord. And our job now is to persuade others. What we are, what we do, what we say. Our reason for being is plain before God. But we hope that we would make it plain also to your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again. But we are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than what is in the heart. Paul says as Christians, we've got something special in our hearts. The love of Jesus. But we, we, we are doing something special today so that you could get beyond what you see of our flesh and see what is in our heart. If, we are, if you say we are out of our minds, as some say, then it's for God to judge us. But if we are in our right mind, it is for you to believe us. So when you see the pastor stands in the pulpit, when you see us washing feet and taking communion, when you see us on Resurrection Sunday uh, 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 saying, up from the grave he arose, Paul says, if you think we are crazy, then it's for God to judge us. But if you stumble on this message and you think that we, 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 we are going somewhere, then it is for you to believe us. For the love of Christ compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all. That those who live should no longer live for themselves. That's Christians, but we live for him who died for us. And was raised again. And I'm now on to verse 16. So Paul says, from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we were once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Paul said, when he came as a baby, we saw him just as Mary's baby, Joseph's baby. They are a baby from a worldly point of view. But because of what he did on the cross, we can't see him no longer from a worldly point of view. Therefore, Paul says, if anyone is in Christ, the new creature has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself to Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Our service, our foot washing, our, our communion. It's this ministry of reconciliation. That God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. And then the last two verses, Paul says, we, the preacher, Christians, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us. He says, we implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. For God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And so just this morning, I'm going to stand as God's ambassador. And I'm going to pray that God would make his appeal through me. So that you would be reconciled to God. Won't you be seated in the presence of the Lord? Nobody loves you like I do, baby. The stamp of perfection was everywhere. A new being and a new planet and a new 
our, our ecosystem, a new universe had just come into existence. You and I were not there at the intersection of time and eternity. The Bible says that God is eternal. He's from everlasting to everlasting. But one day God decided to introduce time. Time is a pause in God's eternity. Won't you say amen? God decided to introduce time. I wish we were uh, uh, transported to the beginning when the ancient of days, that is the Lord most glorious, his magnificent plenipotentiary, he stepped out of eternity and he stepped into time. And uh, the Bible says that he, he started to do some things. It was in the beginning. In the beginning, that's what Genesis 1 and verse 1 to 3 says, that God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form. It was void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the very Spirit of God moved on the waters. The Bible says that God said, let there be what? Light and um, there was light. You and I were not there on the first day, but if we were there, objects and things sprang into existence from the word of God. Stars and planets and galaxies took up their prescribed orbits. Seas and oceans are, are, are spread out at the very word of God. You and I were not there, but if we were there, mountains rose to their majestic splendor, and rivers and fountains are uh, all whispered at his bidding. Uh, uh, things happened, birds tweeted in the trees, and animals started populating the earth, whales and dolphins took up their, uh, uh, their space in the mighty ocean. And it's uh, uh, about the afternoon of the sixth day, the Bible said God looked around and it was good. But there was something missing. There were the elephants, there were the bears, there were the lions, the tigers, there were the slats and the giraffes, there were the, 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 the insects and the birds, there were the whales and the sharks and, and, and everything. But God looked around and he saw that there was something missing. And God decided to make a creature. And he began to look for a pattern for this creature. And he looked at everything that he had made and, and he, he looked and Anthony, he saw that he, he had already made creatures with wings. So he says, I'm not going to make this creature with wings. And he looked around and he saw that he had already made four-footed creatures and he said, well, I can't do that again. And, and, and he looked around and he had made some amphibious creatures that could live in the water and in the sea. And he says, well, I'm not going to do that again. And he had made the, 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 the great whales and the, uh, and the creatures of the deep. And he looked for a pattern, a, a, a model that he could make this creature of. He had some creatures with hoofs. He had some creatures with six and eight legs and, and, and all kinds of different creatures. Creatures with feathers and furs. And then God said to himself, I know what I will do. He said, I'm going to make this creature in my own image. Looking like me. In Genesis chapter 1, we pick up the story in, in verse 27 and 26 and 27. The Bible says, and God says, let us make man in our image. After our what? Likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth. And the Bible says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. That is, God took off his royal robe. He rest down his majestic crown. He put down his eternal scepter. He got down on his ancient of days knees. And he started forming this creature with his immortal hands. He fashioned the bones. 
and the joints came together. All the bones, so that when Ezekiel saw the bones and wondered if these bones would live, it was God who already determined the bones because the ankle bone was connected to the shin bone and the shin bone was connected to the what? The knee bone and the knee bone was connected to the thigh bone and the thigh bone was connected to the waist bone and this is the work of the Lord and God formed this creature together. And then God put in the veins in the creature. And the skeletal and the muscular system that held the, 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 the bones together. And then on the outside of this creature, God put an exothermal. That's a wonderful, beautiful skin on the outside to keep it all together. And the Bible says that God saw it and it was very good. And then God did something. The Bible says that God got down on his knees. And he breathed into man the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the psalmist in Looking in the rearview mirror, he, he exclaimed in Psalm 139 and verse 14, he says, I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And a love story began right there in the Garden of Eden. From time immemorial, this love relationship existed between God and man. This love relationship that would blossom between God and man. And God would leave the business of his day. And he would commune with man. He would walk with them through the Garden of Eden and he would tell them of his love. And he, he, the, the, just the expanse of his wisdom. Until we know it, we blew it. It was not she, it was not he. It was really them, amen? Uh, we blew it. That is Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6 and 7. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food, the Bible says. It was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired, one to make wise. She took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave it also to her husband with her. And he did eat. They blew it. And in one moment, love was shattered. I don't know, but have, have you ever been in love with somebody and they broke your heart? <laughs> have you ever really experienced a heartbreak? We, 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 you gave everything to this one person. You invested everything in their very lives. And they broke your heart. They, they, they stabbed you in the back. I mean, have you ever loved somebody so much that when they walked away from you, it really felt like you had no reason to live? It's crazy though. We walk away from these kinds of relationships, we pick ourselves up together again and we dust off the pieces and we, sometimes we renounce love and swear not to love anymore. But what would God do with his broken heart? Everything that he had ever gave, given this couple, created in his own image, made with his own hands, what would God do with his broken heart? Which country song would he sing for his broken heart? Whose shoulder would he lean on for his broken heart? Nobody loves you like I do, baby. It's amazing what God did. The image that is drawn of God, and here's why we do what we do. Here's why we stand and make appeals on God's behalf. Because human beings have drawn a very terrible image of God. Lightning bolts, ready to strike. Throwing a fit when he doesn't get his way. 
But that's not the image of God that we see in Genesis. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8, that after God experienced a broken heart, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8, they heard the voice of God. They what? They heard. Oh, that's what the King James Version said. I read a version this morning, the New Living Translation, and I was beside myself with joy. This is what the New Living Translation says. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, come on, God didn't throw a storm. God didn't throw a tempest. He didn't throw a tantrum. There were no lightning bolts coming down to strike nobody. The Bible says that God waited till the cool evening breezes were blowing. You know sometimes when I know my wife is having a bad day, I'm excited to get home from work. Why? I stop off the store and I get some flowers. Are you with me? I'm waiting till the cool evening breezes are blowing. I'm stopping off the store and getting some flowers. I'm picking up some of her favorite food from the restaurant. I'm not throwing a tantrum because I didn't get my way. The Bible says that God waited in the cool of the day. And the man and the, his wife heard the voice of God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord among the trees. But nobody loves you like I do, baby. Cool evening breezes, no storm, no tantrum, no tempest, nothing but love. What a wonderful demonstration of love. And the Bible says that in verse 9 of Genesis chapter 3, he called to the man. And he says, Adam. His voice was echoing with mercy and grace. His voice was dripping with love and acceptance. Uh, the cadence of his tone uh, 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 was a cool, perfumed evening breeze that says, nobody loves you like I do, Adam. Nobody loves you like I do, Eve. The Bible says, when God has his heart broken by man, he came looking for man. Adam, where are you? It's me. It's Jehovah, your friend. I'm, I'm looking for you. We find this verse in, in Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 3. The Lord has appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness because nobody loves you like I do, baby. I was reading this morning and I was uh, uh, looking at different versions and, uh, and the implications and, 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 and the nuances in the language and I found the, 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 the Arama uh, Aramaic Bible. The, the Bible uh, was written, uh, came down to us in Hebrew and um, Aramaic. And this is the Aramaic Bible in plain English. He says, from a distance, Jehovah God appeared to me and he said to me, the love of eternity has loved you. Because of this, I have dragged you to grace. I, I, and I got a picture of Adam running away from God and God dragging Adam back into his presence, dragging him back to grace, dragging him back to forgiveness, dragging him back to love because nobody loves you like I do. The contemporary English version says, that's why I've been patient and kind with you. The Dure Rames Bible says, Therefore, I have drawn you to myself, taking pity on you. The New American Bible says, I have drawn you, so I have kept my mercy towards you. The New Living Translation says, With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. Nobody loves you like I do. 
But we, we don't love God, you know. And the basis of God's love for us really has nothing to do with what we give back. In a normal love relationship, you want to see some love being reciprocated back, right? You, you, you want to see that when you write a nice love letter that you get one back, all right? You want to see that when you send a nice uh, a text message with a beautiful heart emoji that you get one back. You want to know that when you whisper, I love you, that you get one whispered back to you. But this is not a typical love relationship. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, I'm glad you asked me. In the book of Romans, in Romans chapter 5, uh, uh, 6, the, the Bible speaks of how we were in the relationship. Romans chapter 5 and verse 6 says that we were, we, we, we were contrasted away from God. The Bible says we were weak, we were powerless, we were without strength, and that's when God loved us. We couldn't even say back to his ears, I love you. In verse 7, he paints a different picture. He says we were unrighteous. Romans chapter 5 verse 7, we were unrighteous, we were sinful, we were ungodly, we were filthy rags, and that's when God says, nobody loves you like I do, baby. In verse 8, the Bible says we were sinners, we were unrepentant, we were unfaithful, and God says, nobody loves you like I do, baby. And then, then in verse 10, in Romans chapter 5 and verse 10, the Bible says we were his enemies. We were vile and despicable. But no one loves you like I do, baby. In 1 John chapter 4 and verse 9 and 10, I want you to write this one down. 1 John chapter 4 verse 9 and 10. This is why we do what we do. In this was manifested the love of God towards us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world. That we might live through him. Here in his love. Not that we love God. But that he loved us. And sent his son to die for us. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 said. But God demonstrated his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners. He died for us. I don't know about you, but it's hard to ignore love. Have you ever been wooed by somebody who you really didn't have any interest in? I see couples kind of drawing closer together. I see some smiles over here. Uh, Veronica is here. Yeah, the last six months he pursued me. I didn't, I didn't really want him. <laughs> Oh my, hallelujah, hallelujah. Have you ever been wooed by somebody who at first you were like, mm, not my type? I don't really want them. Where's she going with that? Where's he going with that? But then over time you saw their heart and you saw the love that was in their heart. I want to tell you that this is what God does. God knows that the best person for you out there you, you, you know, we hear these wonderful things about love, that God has a special person for everybody out there. And that, um, you, you, you know, you go until you find that person. Well, here's what God knows. God knows that there's nobody out there for you but him. God knows that you could search the whole world and you're not going to find a love like his love. God knows that he's not just one in a million, but he's one in a trillion. And so here's what God does. He just silently and constantly, without nagging, no, 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 God is not this kind of bugaboo kind of love either. But real silently, he show off himself. He knows where he's going. He knows the love he has for you. And every day, day in and day out, he just shows that love to you so that you could pause a little and say, hmm, this fellow really loves me. And I've not been giving him any time. 
He's not my type. Because I'm a sinner. He's not my type. He doesn't drink the way I want to drink. He doesn't dance the way I want to dance. He's not my type. If I respond to his love, I'm going to have to change some of the things that I wear. And the things that come out of my mouth, they're going to have to change. He's not my type. But the love that this guy has for me is constant, it's beautiful, it's selfless. Could I just give him a chance? I want to read something I found in the, the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 49. Starting at verse 13. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 13. And, and hopefully the, 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 the crew could put it on the screen for us. Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 13. Shout for joy, O heavens. The, 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 this is now the epitome of, of, of when you realize this love. The Bible says what? Shout for joy, O heavens. Rejoice, O earth, break forth into joyful song. Have you ever gotten up in the morning secure in your love? Have you ever woken up in the morning and rolled over and looked at the person beside you and you're like, wow! Shout for joy, O heavens. Uh, 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 burst into song. For the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted one. Verse 14, but Zion says, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. The Lord does not love me. And then God asks a question. He says, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? That's a question. And he answers, he says, though she may forget. I will not forget you. He says, see, I have engraven you on the palms of my hand. It's the Easter weekend, y'all. I don't know what other demonstration of love you're waiting for. I don't know what other demonstration of love it's going to take to, to, to get your attention or to prick your conscience. But Jesus says that when he was on the cross and the soldiers were driving nails in his hands, he saw it as a tattoo. He says, I was engraving your name in the palm of my hands. I don't know about you, but when someone puts a tattoo of you permanently on their hand, that's a whole lot of love. Come on, somebody. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Some of us have some tattoos of some folks who are not in our lives anymore. Because we once loved them. Or they once loved us. You know what I'm talking about. But God says, when I hung on the cross, I was engraving you on the palm of my hands. Because nobody loves you like I do, baby. And so when Judas betrayed him, He didn't mind that because nobody loves you like he does. And when the soldiers arrested him, he went willingly because nobody loves you like he does. When the high priest accused him and the soldiers whipped him and Pilate tries him, he opened not his mouth because nobody loves you like he does, baby. When the crowd ignores him and chooses Barabbas. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Have you seen Barabbas' rap sheet? 
If I had a daughter to be married, I would not let her get married to Barabbas. If I had a business to run, I would not put Barabbas in charge. But the crowd chose Barabbas over their own lover. He went to the cross. He says, nobody loves you like I do, baby. Oh, what love. What love. I want you to know this morning, there's a secret that the world really does not want you to know. This is why we do this. This is why I appeal on God's behalf. The world doesn't want you to know this secret. Uh, 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 here's the good news that the devil doesn't really want you to know. Nobody really loves you like God loves you. And there's nothing you can do. Write this down. Quote me. Oh, no, don't quote me. But there's nothing you can do to stop God from loving you. Don't take my word for it. Can we let the Bible speak for itself? Can we put Romans chapter 8 verse 35 on the screen? Can we put Romans? Ah, ah, ah. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? The question is asked. Shall trouble or hardship, persecution or famine or nakedness, danger or sword? Verse 37, knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Paul says, well, whatever you go through, you can conquer it because he loves you. Hardship and trouble and persecution and famine and nakedness, danger, sword. Some of the, these are the physical things that you go through. Paul says, no, nah, those things are not able to separate us from the love of Christ. But you say, Pastor, there's some stuff that we can't even see. There's some things that we don't even know of that threatens our very existence. And he continues in verse 38. Paul says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels nor demons, come on somebody, the present nor the future, nor any powers, Neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation is able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Nobody loves you like he loves you. We are therefore God's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. Reconciled mean give him a next look. Consider his love towards you. Yeah, you walked away before. But could you be reconciled to God? Could you like literally look at the love that he has for you? And turn back to him. Here's what God did. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. We talk about Calvary. Good Friday and Easter. The Bible says that God made him to be sin. God loves you so much. He loves me so much. That he took our sin from us and put it on somebody who didn't have sin. So that he can literally kill that person. So that you and I could have life everlasting. Wow. <laughs> it's like God has rigged this thing. We show up in court, we are guilty. We show up in court is the verdict. We got to die. And the judge takes our sentence and grabs somebody out of the crowd and says, come, you, you got to die for this person. You didn't do it. You were not even there. 
They can't blame you for it. You are guiltless. But we're going to make you guilty so that these people who I love could become righteous. That's what happened on Calvary. You and I do not need an exposition in preaching to know what happened on Calvary. You and I do not need the drama and the place to know what happened on Calvary. We've read it. We've seen it. It's been tugging at our conscience. Father, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. Pardon them. Bless them in the process. Because I love them. Nobody loves you like I do, baby. In most love stories or the popular love stories of the day, love ends in death. These popular love stories, Romeo and Juliet. I was thinking this morning about the West Side Story, the Titanic. Somebody loves somebody so much that they literally die for that person. Wuthering Heights, if you're like me, um, you love the old English literature. But this love story does not end in death. Won't you say amen? This love story, folks, that's why I love God. Because this guy has proven his love for me through death and beyond. You say, well, pastor, what happened? It was Matthew chapter 28 that says, early Sunday morning. As it began to dawn towards the first day of the week. Well, pastor, what happened? Well, I'm glad you asked me what happened. For God to love us, it appeared that he hated his son. For God to love us, he had to turn his back on his son. For God to love us, he had to take our sin and place it on his son. For God to love us, he had to pass judgment, our judgment on his son. But doesn't God love his son? Oh yes, he loves his son. Is his only begotten son. I want to read a passage of scripture to you. So that we could understand what God is doing. Isaiah chapter 53, 10 and 11. Because God loves us perfectly. Isaiah chapter 53, 10 and 11. I'm, I'm closing now. The Bible says it was God's good plan to bruise him and to cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants, he will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's good plan would prosper in his hands. Isaiah chapter 53 and now verse 11. When he, that is God, sees all that is accomplished by Christ's anguish on the cross, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience in death, my righteous servant would make it possible for many to be counted righteous. You see, God had a plan. Won't you say amen? I pulled out again my old copy of Romeo and Juliet 
just this morning as I was preparing for the message. You know the plan that Romeo and Juliet had, the, 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 that Juliet would take this potion and it would make her appear to be dead. And they put her in the family's tomb right there. And Romeo did not know of the plan. Come on, somebody. So the Bible, the, 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 the Shakespeare writes the, the, that Romeo now goes to the tomb to, 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 to weep because his, his, um, his bride is supposedly dead. He takes a potion so he could be dead with her. She comes to, she sees him dead. Now she takes the potion so she could be dead with him. That's a plan that went wrong, but God's plan does not go wrong. Because the Bible says that early Sunday morning, when God was satisfied with the plan, when God was satisfied with his final uh, uh, demonstration of love, the Bible says that God sent the angel Gabriel right down to the tomb. He says, Jesus Christ, Son of God, your Father called it you. The Bible says that an earthquake took over the east side of Jerusalem and shook the ground. And in my old days, as a, as a boy growing up in the Moravian church, we used to sing this song that's penned by Robert Ory. Up from the grave, he arose with a mighty conquest of, he arose a victor from the dark domain. He lives forever. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. You see, death couldn't keep him. And when he gave all of his love for you and I, the Father's love restored him to life. So that you and I would have life and have it more abundantly. Folks, nobody loves you like he loves you. You might as well stop searching. You should be saying, when you've tried everything else, try Jesus. No. Don't even try them. Try Jesus first. Because nobody loves you like he loves you, baby. Everything that he had, he gave up for you. He gave up for me. So that you and I could be called the righteousness of God in Christ. We're going to go into the communion service. We do a foot washing service because, guess what? That's what Jesus did. So if I'm going to do it the way I want to do it, the way Jesus did it, amen? The Bible says that they went up into this upper room and the table was laid out right there. There was bread, there was the cup. And he washed their feet. He took the cup, he took the bread, and he broke it. I want to say something to you in 30 seconds. Here's how we show God we love him. If we love each other. Oh no, that would have been a good spot for an amen. So, <laughs> I need to say it again. Here's how we show God that we love him if we love each other. Amen? You see, God knows. God knows that our love for him has to go through a spiritual translation to get to him. Our love is imperfect. We are backsliders. We are murmurers. How does and sort of However, God knows that in proving our love for each other, are you with me? He accepts the love that we have. He accepts that as love for him. Let me say it again. When we prove and show love for what? each other he accepts that as love for him how do we know that we are his disciples if we have what 
Love one for another. It says be tender hearted one to another. Preferring each other. Folks, the way we get vertically aligned with God is through horizontal alignment with each other. God doesn't want us to die for him. He doesn't expect us to pay the sacrifice that he's already paid. No. The Bible says he's, he died once and for all. The only thing he asks us now is to show love one for each other. The foot washing that we're going to do in the next three minutes is an, is an opportunity for humility, is an opportunity for love, is an opportunity for reconciliation. I had to have a hard conversation with a sister of mine just day before yesterday. Something I said that was taken out of context, that my sister thought was, it hurt her. I didn't know about it. I had to reconcile myself with my sister first, even before I could be reconciled with God. I want us not to take, I'm, I'm making a special appeal. I'm, I'm God's ambassador. Making an appeal on his behalf. I want to invite every single one of you to the foot washing service that's going to happen in two minutes. Pray with each other. Love each other. Prefer each other. Live as disciples. Some of us are inside here in the same household. And there is stuff between us. Some of us are inside here and we have not called a brother and a sister in years. I am making an appeal on God's behalf. Use this opportunity. Some of us are inside here and we know we've done wrong. Are we holding something from against somebody for a while? Use this opportunity. I am making an appeal on God's behalf. This is why we do what we do. Because God has given us through his sacrifice the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation to each other, reconciliation to God. Folks, there is no other way into his kingdom. I wish I could tell you a different way. A lot of times there's division in our churches because we are not even reconciled to each other. We move in circles and cliques. One side not liking each other, one side not preferring each other. It doesn't mean you're not going to have your own individual preferences. That's, what, that's not what I'm talking about. But when you're holding your brother and your sister as enemies, you can't have any part in Christ. And so I'm glad for the high days. I'm glad for the Easter's. I'm glad for the Good Friday's. I'm glad for the communion services because they are our constant reminder as often as they come that we got to be reconciled with each other and reconciled to God. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed to call people to reconciliation. I'm not ashamed to say we got to get it right because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And that's why I do it every time. In one minute, we're going to go out and have the, the ordinance of humility. We're going to wash each other's feet. And then we're going to come right back in with the elders, the deacons, the deaconesses. And we're going to have communion. The Seventh Adventist Church practices open communion. This is not attachment with the church, but this is an outward example, a manifestation of our attachment to Christ. So we welcome everybody, every creed, every religion, every person, every gender, every age to participate with us in the communion service. Won't you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the wonderful demonstration of love. We're so thankful, oh God, that we could search a billion, trillion years and nobody would love us like you love us. Thank you for the example. 
of communion. Thank you for going through Calvary. Thank you for the suffering on the cross. Thank you, O oh God, that the Father's love was stronger than any hatred, than any sin, that it burst through the very tomb so that you could have life and we could have it all so more abundantly. Our hearts respond to this love, O oh God. We've seen your love and our hearts respond, O oh God, we love you. Thank you for loving us. We ask, O oh God, that you will carry us through the rest of this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.